the second test we'll use to find if a series converges or diverges is called the integral test. And the integral test is a little bit more tedious and lengthy to carry out than some of the other tests that we'll learn about later on. But it is more familiar. It's something we can connect back to improper integrals, which we're a little bit more familiar with than some of these topics with infinite series. So we'll generally use other tests if we can, but if we need to, we can fall back on the integral test as one way to see if a series converges or diverges. Basically, the idea is we're going to convert an infinite series to a parallel improper integral. And if that improper integral converges, we will know that the series converges. If the improper integral diverges, we'll know that the series diverges. So it needs to be something that we can integrate, and also that function will need to fit a few characteristics that we'll see in a second. But if it does, then we can apply this test. It just means we have to go through the process of integrating and then doing a limit. So again, it takes a little bit of time, but if we can do that, then the integral test can give us an answer for whether a series converges or diverges. So formally speaking, what we do is we take the series that we're given and it has some formula a sub k that determines the terms of the series. And then we'll define a function basically by replacing all the k values with x. But really what's happening there is that we're taking a series which has distinct discontinuous points and we're creating a continuous function that maps to that same list of values. It's a little bit confusing at first, but when it comes to actually doing problems, all you do is define a function that matches the same form as the series. And you'll see what I mean as we do examples. If this function that you define is positive, continuous, and decreasing, so we have three conditions we have to prove for all values of x greater than or equal to one, then the series and the improper integral of that function from one to infinity converge or diverge together meaning that if we know that the improper integral from one to infinity converges, then the series converges as well, and so on. So to start, we're gonna look at two similar examples. So we'll start with the series one over k, and then side by side with that, we'll work out what happens with one over k squared. And so for both of these, we're gonna define a function. For the first one, f of x will equal one over x. For the second one, f of x will equal one over x squared. So again, in practice, all you're doing is replacing all the values of k with x. But again, behind the scenes, what's happening is we're moving to a continuous function over all real values instead of just integer values. Now, for both of these, we need to check is this function positive? Is it continuous? Is it decreasing? As long as x is greater than or equal to one. So as long as x is greater than or equal to one, one over x will be positive and one over x squared will always be positive because we're squaring the values of x. So that's easy enough. Continuous, each of them has a discontinuity at zero so as long as x is greater than or equal to one, they are continuous. And then decreasing, you can just think about what the graphs look like. Here the graph of one over x looks like this. So for values of x greater than or equal to one, it is decreasing. It's moving down toward that asymptote at zero. And one over x squared looks like this. Again, kind of the same pattern. It's also decreasing as you go forward. More formally, you can, uh, for instance, use the first derivative of each of them and prove that the first derivative is negative after positive one, and that would prove that they're both decreasing. But just verifying it with the graph is usually good enough. So once we know that, we're going to convert each series to this improper integral. So here we'll take the integral of one over x from one to infinity and here we'll take the integral of one over x squared. 
And here's where I'm going to take advantage of something that we've done before. If you look back at our unit on improper integrals, we did these two examples. These were the two that we compared and spent a good amount of time going over. So I'm not actually going to spend a lot of time here reviewing these integrals. I'll quickly show you some of the steps and sketch out the solution. But if you remember, the one on the left diverges and the one on the right converges. Which means that the series one over k diverges and the series one over k squared converges. Notice again that subtle distinction. Both of them are decreasing at roughly the same rate, but there's a subtle tipping point where one over k, the terms are not decreasing fast enough to converge, but one over k squared, they are. And we'll actually drill deeper on that idea of that tipping point a little bit later with another type of series that we'll run into called a p-series, but we'll save that for now. I do want to sketch out really quick how you would prove this in case you've forgotten. You would rewrite each of these using a limit, replacing the infinite limit of integration with t. And then in each case, once you integrate, here you would have the natural log of x. And here you would have negative one over x. And then we work this out. You have the limit as t goes to infinity of ln of t minus ln of one. And ln of t as t goes to infinity goes to infinity, so that's infinite. And then on the right hand side, you have a negative one over t minus negative one over one. And as t goes to infinity, negative one over t goes to zero. So this all converges to one. So because that improper integral converges, the series converges as well. So here we would say this series one over k squared converges. And here we would say that the series one over k diverges. So there's our comparison of these two. And we'll do one more example here relatively quickly just to show the full process again. But by comparing these two, you can see what we used earlier with improper integrals comes in handy and is revisited here with the integral test. So let me show you one more example. We can take the series k equals one to infinity of ln of k over k. Now we haven't done a lot of convergence and divergence tests yet. This is only our second one. But I will tell you when you look at something like this after getting the full list of tests, that natural log there isn't something that we're going to use other tests for. So that is a good hint that we're going to need to integrate this because it doesn't fit into a lot of the other categories that we'll use. So we define this function ln of x over x. And we just need to check and see is this function positive? Is it continuous? And is it decreasing? It is positive, at least for values greater than or equal to one, because the natural log function will be positive and x will be positive, so it's positive. Is it continuous? The discontinuity happens at zero, so yes, for values of one and above, it will be continuous. And is it decreasing? This one's a little bit harder to see. You could take the derivative and then make sure that that derivative is negative for all values of x greater than or equal to one. But also you can notice that the natural log function doesn't grow as quickly as x. If you look at the graph, y equals x looks like this, and y equals ln of x looks like this. So it's still growing, but it's not growing as quickly 
So x will increase faster than ln of x does, which means that the fraction will decrease. So again, we don't need a really rigorous proof that it's decreasing, as long as we can verify it in some reasonable way, like using the graph. So then we'll convert this to the integral of ln of x over x. And we now need to integrate this. So we need to integrate, and I'll do that here on the side, with the indefinite integral before we worry about the limits of integration and the improper part. We'll just deal with the integral by itself. So you might want to pause here and see if you can figure out how to do this integral, running through your methods of integration that you know. But it turns out that u substitution will work. If we let u equal ln of x, then du will be 1 over x dx. And so it turns out that this integral is simply u times du using that definition. So that would be 1 half u squared plus c. But of course we don't need the plus c since we're doing a definite integral. So 1 half u squared and since u is the natural log of x, our integral turns out to be 1 half times ln of x squared. So that means that this integral here turns into the limit as t approaches infinity of the integral from 1 to t. We know what the answer is for the integral. And all we need to do now is evaluate the limit. So if we plug in t, we get 1 half ln of t squared. And then if we plug in 1, of course ln of 1 just equals 0. But notice that as t goes to infinity, ln of t also increases without bound. So ln of t squared certainly increases without bound, which means all of this equals infinity, which tells us that the series also diverges since the improper integral diverges as well. So again, some of the other tests that we'll run into later on are quicker and easier than the integral test. But if you're stuck and the series in question is one that you could integrate and you can prove that it's positive, continuous, and decreasing, then the integral test can apply.